I do think aliens exist. I think if the universe is infinite, then infinite possibilities exist, which means there are infinite just Earths with everything that has happened in the whole history of time, whatever that history may actually be, has happened over and over and over again with slightly different variations. That's why I think. So aliens are definitely real because we, another version of us is real. I'm Lisa F.T. Mescal. Welcome back to the Under the Spotlight podcast. Today we're going to be talking about uni life and growing up with super chill parents versus strict parents and a bunch of other random different things. But I'm Lisa F.T. Mescal. I'm a first year acting student at drama school at Rose River College in England, but I'm originally from Romania and I grew up in Germany. And Under the Spotlight it's basically just a podcast about my life. I put different topics and subjects under the spotlight and also I'm an actor, which is connected to the name. But yeah, I have so many different things I want to talk about. Every single time I make a podcast episode, I have like ideas of things in my head I want to talk about and then I always forget a couple and then I want to talk about them next time or whenever and then I forget about them again. So I wrote some of them down today so I wouldn't forget. The first being a big shout out to the Definitely Serious podcast. It is a podcast hosted by one of my friends and his friend all about movies and it's really really so you should definitely check it out. It's available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all the podcast streaming platforms. They actually just did a recap episode on the first June and then when the next June, when this June comes out, they're gonna be talking about the next June which I am so so excited to watch Dune. Part two, I've been watching a lot of the cast interviews, which I love watching cast interviews, especially like more silly ones where they play like games or answer silly questions or do like who knows each other best, who's most likely to, whatever. I found those so fun and cute to watch, um, watch the Austin Butler and Florence Pugh kitten video. It was so cute. And yeah, just very excited. One of the things I actually want to talk about is how weird it is seeing people like from your old life while you're at uni or whatever. Like my sister's coming to visit, which I think will be strange for her more so than for me though. But it's weird because it's like my two worlds are colliding. Because we're twins, we spent our whole lives together and our lives have always been like entangled and connected and everything. And now it's so weird that they're separate. It's really sad. Like every time we leave each other, I cry because I just think it's really fucked up that we don't live together anymore and we're not close to each other anymore. Physically, not emotionally, because I love her so much and she's the best. And I do, well, I think generally people just wish this, I wish we'd just spent more time together while we lived together. But I think being apart is like, it is making us really appreciative of each other. And I think we're gonna try to make a more conscious effort to spend just lots of time together when we are together over the summer holidays and whatever, but she doesn't even have fucking Easter holidays, though she's taking a week and we're going to Romania, which is really exciting. But yeah, it just, this sounds so silly and self-obsessed, but that's not what I mean at all. But I think sometimes it's so weird to imagine or like understand or even conceptualize the idea that there are seven billion or eight billion people now on this planet living just as much of a life as you are. Like they're living a whole life. They're not just like people, side characters in your life or whatever, or important characters or literally just faces you see once and never again or people you never meet everyone on this planet is living their own life whatever life that may be and that's so bizarre to realize that there's like there's eight billion of this going on in the world and not just on this planet now oh my god this was not supposed to be discussion about aliens i do think aliens exist. here's my thing okay i don't know that much about space and science and whatever but everyone says the universe is infinite right but at the same time kind of finite right our resources are finite but like even across the whole universe but it's infinite at the same time i find that really interesting anyway i think if the universe is infinite then infinite possibilities exist which means there are infinite just earths with everything that has happened in the whole history of time, whatever that history may actually be, has happened over and over and over again with slightly different variations. That's why I think. So aliens are definitely real because we, another version of us is real, but yeah, it's crazy. And like, it must be really far away. In our lifetime, we'll probably never see it. It might never be discovered. Isn't that also crazy? There's just things that might like actually never happen even though time is also infinite. Like even if like earth explodes or something, like something like this has to eventually happen again because possibilities are infinite and time like doesn't end. Even the time, is that a social construct? Sort of, but at the same time, is it a dimension? Also sort of, maybe, I don't know. Science gets really confusing and complicated at this point. And then I'm like, like, like I start thinking about this cause I do find it really fascinating. But then I get to this point and I'm like, Ugh. I can't, I like, there's too many possibilities and I can't even make sense of them anymore. And then I just kind of leave it. 
there because uh, I don't care that much because it is infinite. I definitely think there's aliens out there because like, let's be honest, there has to be like the chance that Earth would become a habitable planet for us and whatnot is really, really low, but it did. And it must have happened again in like different ways, obviously. So there's definitely aliens out there. It's just how far away are they? And thank God they're far away because who knows what would happen. Anyway, that was not the point of this at all. It's weird to think about everyone living like their own separate lives from you. Like I went to visit, I talked about this a little bit last podcast episode, but this past weekend I went to visit one of my best friends from back home. We've literally known each other since we were sick. We've been best friends since we we're like, 14. I went to visit her and it was so weird. Like we were talking about how weird it was. It doesn't actually feel like we're at off at uni or anything, but also it's weird that she's just off there like living her own life. Like in my head, and this, like again, I don't mean this in like a conceited way, but in like humans can't process the 8 billion lives that are on this planet. You can only really process like your own and a couple other people. So like, in my head, not like consciously or anything, but subconsciously, her life, it's not like she's a side character in my life. She has her own life, but in my life, in my view of it, she's a character in my life. So her life kind of stops while I'm gone at uni because we're not together anymore. Not in the sense that like, I don't think it's going on. We need to keep in contact whatever I know is going on in her life. But it's like, I think about how much I've changed in the past couple of months, just being at uni and being at drama school. A lot of people from my school, even like the hundred people who graduated from my school last year have changed in that way. And that's, weird because in my head they're just like they're 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 kind of frozen where i left them like when i left my high school last year and that's where they'll stay well that's where some of them will stay forever maybe some of them till our reunion or whatever but it's really weird to think about that they're all living their own lives and it doesn't feel like it like when i visited her at uni it was so weird and it kind of just felt like old times like we were hanging out like before which was really nice like truly we just talked like normal and clicked so well still and it was really really nice felt like a piece of home but yeah it just it didn't feel like she was at uni and even we were talking about how because we did this thing i've mentioned it all the time i'm always like we did this thing called the ib but it's like a high school graduation program and it's torture and i say that every time i hated it whatever and it's you do it in your last two years of high school but i knew from um like first grade not super consciously in first grade because i was six years old, but I knew for a long time that that was what I was gonna be doing two years of high school. And then like the older I got, the more warnings I got from everyone how hard it was and awful it was. So I always knew it was coming. And then it was so weird that it actually like happened that we actually got there. And I like, I completely forgot about this, but as we were talking over the weekend, I remembered that when we finally got to 11th grade and we started the IB, we were like, I can't believe we're IB students. It doesn't feel real, blah, 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 blah. And then, like we kept talking about that whatever the first couple of months and then we kind of dropped it and i left that thought there i completely forgot about it because the next thing you know with the ib you're fucking balls deep in it and it is awful genuinely i don't think there's an in between like you feel like you're not an ib student it doesn't feel real and then all of a sudden you're like in it and you're like i totally feel like an ib student this is awful i'm not even thinking about whether i feel like an ib student anymore because i don't have the time to think about that and then you do it and then you graduate and you're done and now it feels so so far away, which is crazy because it really did like, like it was such a big part of my life for two years and now it's just not a part of my life at all. And now it's the same thing with like being at uni. Like I don't feel like I'm at uni and I've even done summer programs of like acting like for a week long acting course or whatever. And it kind of feels like that. Like it feels like I'm on break right now and I'm at uni, I'm doing this silly goofy little thing. And then eventually I'll go back home to my parents, I'll live with my parents and they'll be the boss of me and I'll go back to school, which sounds like an awful plan. Um, so I'm glad that's not the case, but like it still doesn't feel real and it's been five months, that's crazy. I'm also more than halfway through my first year, which terrifies me because especially at acting school, like your first two years are your training and then in your third year you do two or three plays, a showcase, some show reels, like a personal like project devising kind of thing. It's a lot more just creating um, and you, you've done learning skills, which is really stressful to think about. And I definitely want to start and continue to push myself more, make sure I'm really like getting as much as possible out of my classes and working hard outside of my classes and harder outside of my classes. I can definitely tend to neglect that sometimes because this is like my training is all I have and then I'm out in the real world and doing acting and it is a hard hard industry to break into and I definitely need to and want to make sure that I'm doing the work for it and that's how I'll get there and then you get there and get, get anywhere. Time is so weird at uni because especially with drama school like 
we have quite long hours and intense weeks sometimes time feels so stretched out like the weeks feel really really long individually but then the weekends are so short and then somehow it feels so weird that i'm already into my third week since almost done with my third week since being back from reading week and i literally have three more weeks and then i'm on reading week again and then i i'm not reading week and then i'm on easter break for three weeks then i'm back for eight weeks and then my first year is done like that is insane and it makes no sense to me and it kind of terrifies me it's really weird to like think about people living a whole separate life from you it's almost kind of like acting because when you create a character or you develop the, a character and try to get into their mindset like your biggest job your only job really is just to understand like their daily life and their thoughts and everything and it is creating a whole nother person and like it is very very hard to do that fully in the same way it's hard to imagine that for a character and imagine every thought they would have all the people in their lives all the interactions they have every day their whole thought process it's hard to imagine that for anyone else so it's hard to imagine or like understand that people are living these whole separate lives from you and you're not a part of it or you are or you're not that much of it yeah it's weird. Even like my parents' lives, like I don't know what's going on. Not in, not in the sense of like, like I know what they're doing. They tell me what they do and like when they go out with friends and whatever, what they're up to, but I, I don't feel involved. Not that I'm not involved, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Like, it's not right to say I don't feel a part of their lives anymore because I do and I know I am. I don't know. I don't know. Before I get into the whole having strict parents, having chill parents uh, thing, the other thing I wanted to talk about was something my voice teacher brought up to us slash told us about in voice class, which is not actually really voice related, but really, really interesting. And basically I am quite fascinated by like personality types, personality colors. I'm ENFJ, T and three wing two, two wing three, can't remember what, two wing, no, two wing one. That's what it is. If that means anything to you. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I, okay, I like personality, especially the ENFJ types. I really like, I find them really interesting and I find it interesting to kind of like understand how your brain works. But I would say they're prescriptive, not descriptive. So like do not define yourself by them. Everyone has like, even if you take like the ENFJ MBTI personality test, like your percentages of everything and it doesn't define you. And like even my best friend and I, when we first realized we were both ENFJs, we're like, huh, we have such different personalities. And then the biggest difference in that is she's an A and I'm a T, which is basically assertive versus turbulent, I think. Assertive? Is that what it is? I don't know. We are quite different. We think different. We, we have totally different passions and hopes and dreams and plans for our lives and everything. Um, we just kind of think a bit similarly in that sense. And then in some sense, is we have like similar priorities or habits or i would say i never take too much stock in them because they don't define you i don't think it would be good for anyone to let themselves be defined by them like there's 16 personality types and there's 8 billion people on the planet like you can't be telling me 500 million people are the same they're obviously not so there's a whole lot of variety to them but anyway he told us about this new or not new but different type of personality system which i never heard of so it's new to me which is colors and basically there's four colors and everyone has elements of all of them but then there's like predominant qualities that people have from one or two and so it's like what color are you is actually becoming a thing and i just thought it was so so fascinating because you also when you get stressed out then or or are in tense situations or whatever you tend to go to the opposite of what you are which i also find really really interesting so he's telling about us about that and basically there's four colors so the first color is red i find it so interesting they're like there's the three primary colors red yellow and blue and then there's green and those are like the four like even as a kid the what were the main colors red yellow blue green i always thought that was so weird because green is not a primary color but it's one of them but then like purple and orange they're not involved they're real enough so red people generally like to get things done when they like to do things and not talk about them they're usually ceos or directors or leaders sometimes they can be quite abrasive and very alpha because they like to lead and like get things done their way and they can be very later focused on that there's more like to say for all of them obviously but you can google it as well but that's the general general just of a red. Reds are usually more extroverted. And then there's blue, which is introverted, wants time to think, thinks through, very, very detailed and plan oriented and like gets very specific with that and wants to know all their options. So those be like the people taking notes or writing out long lists, really planning stuff. I, I like to plan stuff, but I, don't. <laughs> but I don't often stick to my plan. Oops. Um, then there's sunshine yellow, which wants to be involved, super, super extroverted, very creative, super friendly, wants to be friends with everyone, very social, and does not plan his very last minute. And I am 
Oh, 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 very last minute. And then last but not least, there's Earth Green. And they want to know you care. They're very, very emotional, introverted, super deep feelers. They tend to care a lot and be very supportive. And that's like their biggest priority in life. So in a situation, Fiery Red would just want to like get the task done. Blue would want to have time to think it through and like figure out how to do it best and plan it, whatever. Yellow would want to do it together and green would want to do it gently like focus on everyone's feelings and then do it i don't know but also these are like not definitive and also i'm not an expert on this i was just told this by my voice teacher who's also not an expert on this so like do your own research but i do find them really interesting i am definitely a yellow and a green but they change like depending on who you're around or like what environment you're in so they might change if you're at work or if you're um, with your friend or depending on what friend you are with. Because I was such like a perfectionist and a very stressed out student in school. I think I used to be and sometimes still am in like schooly environments. I can be quite blue just in terms of like wanting to achieve and do things correctly and all that, which is a habit I'm trying to break free of an acting school. Cause you can do things well and like put in the work, whatever, but you can't really do things correctly. They can sort of correct in that sense. I think at my core, I'm very yellow and green. So when we did this, my friends were like lisa you're so yellow and it's true like i just want to be friends with everyone i love my friends like they're one of my biggest priorities in my life i'm always focused on like really trying to be a good friend to everyone i really value like my relationships and my friendship and i want to make sure i'm being a good friend to everyone and i'm also very green like i'm very very emotional thinking about emotions all the time my emotions and other people's emotions and like protecting them valuing them taking care of them being conscious of them in any situation and then i think actually this uh, this is the part i thought was really interesting i think i actually live in a household of green it's like both of my roommates are green and greens and yellows but then like one of my roommates is she's like the most yellow and green of us all because she's quite a relaxed individual the other two of us cannot relate uh quite stressed out slash anxious human being so i think in that kind of situation like someone kind of has to take over and be the yellow and be the red and the yellow to balance out the group and make sure like we get things done and we do the plan and whatever or even if you are yellow and green if you feel like a lot of yellow and a red and yellow you kind of tend to take that over because people want the balance in life which i think makes me more a bit more red and yellow but my roommate especially the most red and yellow out of all of us even though i think at her core and around other people she's quite yellow and green which i think is really really interesting and i also think uh, my sister is more red and blue than i am which makes me more yellow and green because i'm able to be like i'm also the type of person to say like i'm type a but around other type a's I'll e you'll either make me more type a because you're pissing me off with your type a-ness because you're wrong with it or you make me less type a because i'm like oh, okay they can do it so i don't have to do it there are situations where i let like my sisters take charge or whatever because either it's just like easier than like me trying to take charge or something or i know they want to do it anyway and they care about it more than i do so i'm like okay you can do it i can just sit back and then i relax yeah i thought that was really interesting i've also had a friendship situation recently where like well it's been kind of shit but one of the ways i think i went wrong is like i i always if we relate or bond at all i kind of like not that i latch on in like a clingy clingy way not that i can't be clingy because i definitely can but at least i know that about myself but i kind of i think in that friendship made a lot of assumptions because we did bond a lot, over a lot of things emotionally and being high and being people pleasers i kind of interpreted her to be more like me and more of like a yellowy green and she was more of a blue and it kind of like i had that realization as well not to say being blue is bad or whatever it just made me understand our friendship a little bit more or her a little bit more and it's like funny to look at with my parents because my dad is kind of all of them in a way i don't know with any sort of personality thing or anything i always find it so hard to define my dad because i just think he's everything he's divergent okay but yeah i find it really interesting i find it really interesting how it makes you work how it makes you like interact with other people and the different environments which in which you are red and green because even my roommate who i think is more red and blue with us but like wants to be more yellow and green sometimes it's interesting because she likes hanging out with other people who are more red and blue or will take on a more red and blue role around her and then she can be her true yellow and green self. That sounds dramatic. Yeah, and there's not like one is better than the other, except whatever I am, obviously, is the best. Everyone has bits of all of them and you need all of them to kind of make things work. But even I say like, I'm so yellow and green, but they're also like, one is an introvert and one is super extroverted. Like there's opposites and balances and whatever. Anyway, of course it would take me half an hour to get to the topic. It's half an hour filming. Get to the topic I want to discuss today, which is having strict parents versus not having strict parents which is um like the effect of having chill parents now i had very chill parents but i think my parents were also lucky in the sense that 
I'm their daughter. No, but in the sense that like both me and my sister didn't really give them a reason to be strict. But that's not to say that's why they were chill. Like they were chill because they were chill, but then they continue to be chill and like kind of let us do what we want to do within reason because they trusted us and we never kind of like, we never did anything like super rebellious or crazy or anything that needed to be punished or that we needed like authority in charge just to make sure we were behaving and not getting into like trouble or dangerous situations or anything. But yeah, anyway, there's so many different ways in which my parents were chill, which I kind of wrote down a few like of the big ones that I could think of. For example, one of the things was drinking. First of all, I'm European and I think that does make a difference and it is kind of a cliche because I definitely had friends who had European parents and did not behave according to cliches but my parents were always chill about drinking but also always telling us to be responsible and take care of ourselves and making sure that we knew the dangers of drinking we weren't drinking too much I don't know when I started drinking technically in Germany you're allowed to drink I think from the age of 14 with your parents and then 16 you can drink beer and wine and like champagne and like low percentage alcohol and then when you turn 18 you can drink anything from like 13 14 like I was allowed to try my parents drinks or whatever I didn't really have drinks. I also wasn't that interested in drinking, which again, like it made it easy for my parents to be chill. You know, when you're a kid and you see your parents drinking and my parents are not drinking, like they barely drink, but like, you're like alcoholics. I feel like that's a common kid experience. I mean, I'm sure not all kids did this, but like some of my friends were talking about this. I think it's really funny. But anyway, my parents truly drink so rarely and so little. It was just entirely untrue, which makes it funnier. Um, and then you turn into a teenager and you're like, alcoholic. <laughs> Um, not really. Oh my god, there's some crazy people. There's people in my school who had to get their stomachs pumped at like 14 because they were drinking too much and like went to the hospital because of it. Like that's insane. And that's where like chill parenting can go too far because I think that person did have quite chill parents. And that's also the kind of situation where like I wasn't gonna drink too much so my parents could be chill with me, but it just has created such a good relationship I have with my parents and a very good relationship I have with being like responsible and alcohol and drinking and all of that stuff. So I really do think like being chill within reason like worked out great for my parents i know it doesn't work out for everyone but i think for the most part it creates an environment of you being able to trust your parents and your parents being able to trust you and so then if you are ever in trouble or you fuck up or you do something crazy like you're not scared to tell your parents and you know that cliche of like you call them at 5 a.m to pick you up instead of getting a car with a drunk driver like that is so important and i think that is an important role parents need to play because at the end of the day like in my opinion obviously i'm not a parent like i don't know what i'm talking about i think you need to your kid needs to be able to trust you and call you in times of need as opposed to be scared of you because whether or not they drink and rebel or whatever do teenagey things is not dependent on you as a parent and the rules you set but dependent on them and you can only change how they do it and how they interact with alcohol and whatever else it is sex going out etc as opposed to whether or not they do that and then like when i started drinking like my parents just kind of let me they always made sure i was safe they always knew like i could call they always told me made sure i knew i could call them and like ask for help and whatever and i never actually needed to like i've never thrown up from drinking because i've never felt the need to like get crazy drunk or rebel against what my parents like because i was always just kind of allowed to drink and they were careful like if i got really drunk one night and then they picked me up they the next day there would be a little bit of a lecture that'd be like be careful with how much you drink it was more of a discussion than that but like it would never be like you're grounded you can never drink again banning me from spending time with certain people whatever because i just i think I, I mean i'm sure it works on some people and some people with strict parents turn out, turn out fine but i think there's such a culture especially in the u.s of people going to uni and then or college and then binge drinking and like drinking too much, going to too many parties, doing drugs, and doing all sorts of crazy things because they finally have the freedom to do so. And I get that. Like, I get going to the opposite end of the extreme once you can, but that's where it gets dangerous. Whereas, like, I feel like Europeans on average, but also just people who have more relaxed parents or more understanding parents, I guess you could call it, that happens less because I just like, I was taught how to drink responsibly. I know my limits. Like, I know to be safe. I know to be around people I trust and create an environment where I'm safe. And I've had practice doing that because I could do it in a safe environment with my parents around. And really what you want, like in my opinion, which again, not a parent could be full of shit. In my opinion, like as a parent, you want to prepare your kid for uni and for that kind of stuff by like giving them the opportunity to practice basically being in that kind of environment so that it's not totally new and shocking and everything so yeah that is a big thing my parents were chill with they were also like if i wanted to have someone over i could i never really did again useless rule for a girl who's never had a boyfriend but i knew if i wanted to have someone over and sleep over and whatever 
then that would have been allowed. And again, I even had this like amazing, I remember this discussion so vividly. I'm sure my dad doesn't. Me and my sister were like 10 or 12 years old or something. We were still quite young. He told us like kind of like offhand or whatever that like if we wanted to, like we were having, talking about love and sex and whatever. And he told us if we wanted to have sex before we were 18, then like as long as it was with someone we love and we were being safe or whatever, like that would be okay. And he didn't even bring in the whole waiting for marriage thing into it at all, which also is because we're all atheists. That concept I learned about not as a child, but like old, getting older, knowing it was something like other people are in some situations pushed into it, in some situations like like, I totally understand, like, if you want to wait for marriage, then wait for marriage. In my head, I just, like, I believe in marriage, and I want to get married. I want to find someone that I, like, want to spend the rest of my life with and whatever, but I don't believe it in, a, like, a religious union or anything. Like, I believe it's, like, a sign of your commitment to each other, not a religious thing. And I think the whole idea of, like, having, like, a romantic one romantic partner for the rest of your life or having a soulmate like i don't think that's necessarily true even if that's something i want so marriage as a construct i don't really believe in marriage is something i want to still do yeah sure um so that whole idea of like waiting for marriage or whatever didn't even come into question but that was such a nice discussion to have with my dad even though i was so young because it was well it wasn't even a discussion really but like because i knew from that day on like if i wanted to do something i could tell my dad about it and he trusted me and he would be there for me and he wouldn't judge me and I wouldn't have to hide it or sneak around. And it was so funny in like middle school when everyone was like dating different people and it was like middle school, not serious relationships, they wouldn't tell their parents about it because they were scared to or they weren't allowed to date anyone or whatever. And my parents would always know about everyone else's relationship as well because I just told my parents everything. So like it really created just this trust and safety there again. And I, like, again, I don't think you can stop kids from doing what they're gonna do really you can only like change how they go about it so in that kind of situation like if i was you know a kid and i wanted to have sex i could have i don't know if i would have but i could have like gone to my parents about it then they could make sure it, everything was safe and i was fine and whatever which again my opinion and i'm not a parent but i just think that's so much more useful and valuable than anything else and it really just solidifies this like idea of trust anyway i'm talking about these for so long for no reason and then when yesterday i was looking on reddit about like strict parent stories and that kind of stuff like there's so many people who had rules about like finishing your plate before you go up which i just think is insane i get the idea of wanting your kid to be like responsible with how much food they put on their plate and then make sure they finish it but then if you're putting the food on their plate and they have to finish that or whatever that's crazy i just feel like that could ruin a child's relationship with food and then ca cause really really bad trauma with that and just generally like if kids are hungry why, why are you making them eat like that rule doesn't even like i get where it comes from and even like my parents are very finish your plate in terms of like they finish all the food or save it for leftovers and then make sure they eat all the leftovers like they're very careful with not being wasteful which is definitely a thing coming from like growing up in communism where they had much less food and rationing and even if you know you had the coupons for the ration like the food wasn't necessarily available or you had to stand in long lines for it and all that but they never put that on us they never tried to like make us go through that and i think a big part of that is also like they left romania or and they even like fought in the romanian revolution which alone is crazy and it's definitely a story for another time so that they could live a life and create a future in which me and my sister didn't have to worry about those kinds of things or worry about clearing our plate or like the next meal and everything anyway then with going out and curfew yeah didn't didn't have a curfew all my friends had curfews i thought it was so funny also and this is just like how it happened to be i don't think it's like necessarily a gender thing but at one point i was in a friend group where all my girlfriends had curfews and then me and the guys would go oh, no it's not like such a big news like me and my guy friends but like we would go out after also that friend group did not last long because it did not but yeah, didn't have a curfew. Also knew again, like my parents would come and pick me up anytime my dad has picked me up and my friends whose parents would not do this um, up at like four in the morning, five in the morning. I picked my sister up from the club at four in the morning, five in the morning because I am just awake at any fucking time. And then either, usually my dad's awake, but if he's gone or really sleepy, I'd be like, just go to bed. I'm not gonna go to bed anyway. So I'll just pick up my sister. Even like with going, having permission to go out, my parents always wanted me to like keep them updated. Um, so they knew that I'd be safe and everything. But even once I messaged or called him before like going out somewhere with a friend, it wasn't even like out, out. I was literally just meeting up with a friend. I was like 16 or something. And it was during the summer break and he was like, girl don't ask for permission just go do whatever text us what you're doing but like just do it have fun 
which was really nice. I just thought it was really funny that he told me not to ask for permission. There's all the ways in which my parents were not strict and it made me a wonderful human being. No, but I really do think it's very formative to you and how you act as an adult. And I feel like your teenage years are tests for how to be an adult and the best way to let you be an adult is like give you a shot at it while you're safe and under the protection of your parents and they can watch out for you and make sure you're being safe and responsible and everything and even like there were some things actually to be fair it was not a thing my parents were that strict with but like going to bed and like screen time on my phone and ipad in the later years later years was a thing we had which i hated but i completely completely understand why my parents did it and i am grateful ish for it I don't know how much of an impact it made in the end also because again my parents were more chill with this rule my dad is this night owl so we would stay up late watching stuff together sometimes as well but he would try to kind of make me go to bed and give me a bedtime not give me a bedtime but like if i was on my phone or reading or doing whatever late at night he would walk in there and be like bitch go to bed and i would get in trouble for this on occasion because i was one hell of a night owl even in i remember like a couple not that often but a couple times in like third grade where it was 2 a.m and i couldn't sleep and i'd go to bed and i'd be like i can't sleep but not being able, able to sleep is the worst thing ever i like i generally don't deal with it a either because i'm really fucking tired all the time because i don't get enough sleep and i go to bed really late so usually if i'm going to bed like i'm tired i conk out or every i can't stand lying in bed with my eyes closed and not being able to sleep it is so awful i once one time couldn't sleep for went to bed at 3 a.m couldn't sleep from 3 a.m to 12 p.m it was such an awful night i was like laying there trying to sleep and like my eyes were burning i was tired but i just couldn't fucking fall asleep but like it doesn't happen often i have happened often it just happened like that one time there's been other times where i've had trouble going to sleep yeah but like when i can't sleep like there's 500 thoughts going on in my brain at once it is actually like it hurts my brain like there'll usually be some kind of song in the background but it changes into a different song then there'll be beat then there'll be whatever bedtime story romance imagination fake romantic dating story i'm making for myself is going on but like i can't focus on that it's is a lot when i'm trying to go to sleep and i can't sleep so generally i like i just kind of try to tire myself out when i go to sleep by reading which is great tip. really makes me fall asleep i thought i'd read a couple of crazy parenting strict parenting stories that said i have um eight minutes before i have to go to uni because i talked for a lot longer than i thought i would so I might read a couple of them, not all of them. I didn't actually, I thought Reddit was a great source for crazy stories. I feel like I'm always seeing crazy stories on Reddit, but I couldn't even find that many crazy stories. But some of these are just so fucking funny. Like one of these is, when I was about 13, me and my best friend stuck, snuck out of her house. And this is for like strict parents. We had to sneak past her grandmother who was sleeping on the couch and out the sliding glass door. We made it successfully. However, when we opened the gate, the dog got out. We spent the entire time trying to catch the dog. Uh, I just thought that was so funny. This is just really funny. Uh, one of the stupid rules someone with strict parents has was my dad once heard my sister say fart and got really angry because it was not ladylike. So he prohibited us using prohibited prohibited us using it. Instead, we were to say noise that came from behind, which made it even funnier to me. I thought that was so crazy. That's just such a random like thing to get hung up on. But I feel like all parents have like that one weird thing that they're like, no. And it, it doesn't quite make sense for you. I didn't know farting was such a big deal, but someone else wrote, among other stupid nonsensical rules, until I moved out at 17, I wasn't allowed to say fart because it was a swear word. If I needed to talk about farts, I had to call them fluffs. My best friend and I would kill ourselves over half. <laughs> Silly this was, which again, I agree. That's that's really funny though. I was reading through them last night and suddenly a lot of them were like really sad and like had more hints of like abuse or just very toxic relationship with your parents, which again is another reason I think. Like I talk to my parents all the time. I love my parents. I tell them about my exploits on nights out and whatever. And the same with my other two roommates. Like we're all quite close to our parents and we tell them everything. And the only reason I do that is because they're so chill and I really can't tell them everything. I can tell them about the stupid decisions I made on a night out while I was drunk. I will only on occasion get a little bit of a lecture. So it's really nice and it really just fosters a very safe environment and a very comfortable, happy, friendly family environment. Um, and it's really, really nice. And I like, it is, it's the reason I'm so close to my parents. And that is something I cherish and love so much. And my, my parents are close to their parents and like I'm close to my grandparents because of it as well. And they're chill as well. And I can tell them a little bit about these stories, I don't tell them as much because I will get a lecture about drinking. It's okay. There were some crazy stories of your One of the ones I found was the word disgusting was banned and could have been considered just as bad as saying fuck. We weren't allowed to close doors unless we were in the bathroom. We weren't allowed to watch Cartoon Network because it was garbage. They actually put a parental lock on Cartoon Network. The worst punishment was one time they decided that we were such bad kids. My sister was 14, I was 12-ish. They took everything we owned and bagged it up into garbage bags and made us carry them into a 
burn pile and they burn everything we owned all of my childhood memorabilia pictures clothes diaries everything burnt it all fucked up when it was done burning the next day or so later my sister and i looked through ashes and all that was left were two silver rings of her like that is insane and so heartbreaking i mean this is like beyond the extreme of having strict parents but like that's awful to burn all your child thing like everything you hold value to that really fucks up your kids as well and this is dark and sad but also a bit funny but someone wrote underneath that my friend's parents burned his stuff so he burnt down their house he calmly waited for the cops then told them that his parents made him do it for the insurance money which was a lie of course parents lost everything got no insurance payout father went to jail for a short time and the entire family ended up homeless and split up to go their separate ways that's also a bit sad a bit sad and crazy but also revenge but yeah there's some crazy stories out there but yeah let me know how your parents were strict chill and if if you have any crazy sneaking out stories or exploits you got up to as a kid the one thing with strict parents is i i with chill parents is i don't because my parents were chill so i was allowed to do what i wanted but yeah if you do comment down below maybe i'll do another episode of this someday my mic stopped recording i'm fucking 15 minutes into this that's rude because we have phone audio for this episode um the mic stuff is hard it like this it makes the sound weird and confusing but i'm learning i'm getting used to it we'll, we'll get there in the end i really hope you guys enjoy this episode of the under the spotlight podcast there's new episodes every single wednesday you can watch them on spotify or youtube or if you want to listen to them they're available on pretty much all other uh podcast streaming platforms so make sure you subscribe or plus them or whatever it is and come back for more next time also if you want follow me on instagram and tiktok and subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to stay up to date on my life thank you so so much for watching this podcast episode i had so much fun making it call me your crazy parenting stories and i'll see you guys next week okay bye